Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's continue with our uh, discussion, which is uh, whose aim is to define what a regular function at a point is. Okay, so let me again go back to this definition. The definition says that you know uh, uh, you have a function f uh, with values in k, the base field, and it's defined in an open set containing the point small x. Uh, of course, that open set could be uh, that open set is being considered as an open set in the uh, in the affine variety or quasi affine variety in which x exits okay uh, and uh, we say the function f is uh, regular at that point if it is uh, if it can be written as a quotient of polynomials okay uh, uh, that is there are there are two polynomials uh, whose quotient uh, will define a function uh, a, a quotient of polynomials will define a function into uh, the field the base field the sc uh, scalar valued function wherever the denominator polynomial does not vanish that is uh, that is actually uh, so this uh, a function of the form g mod h where g and h are polynomials will always define a function on d h on this basic open set d h. Uh, which you know in its own right is actually an affine variety and the fact is that uh, uh, you will ha you will just have to find uh, your point uh, 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 your h such that d h intersection x capital X contains small x and which is possible because it is basically because uh, any open set is a finite union of such d h's for various hs right which is a fact that we already seen in fact uh, uh, any open set here is the complement of a closed set and that closed set is given by the zero set of an ideal and that ideal is finitely generated and therefore the that closed set is given by the intersection of the uh, zero set sets of the generators of the ideal and therefore its complement is given by the corresponding union of basic open sets namely the loci the open sets where the corresponding generators of the ideal does not vanish individually it is the union of that okay that is how every open set is a finite union of basic open sets and therefore uh, this is my definition and this definition seems to be correct uh, for uh, uh, if you look at a basic open set uh, a, a good function on this uh, is of that form okay but the but the point is that uh, whenever you make a point wise definition what you are actually doing is you are gluing okay and the problem with gluing is that it can produce new objects new uh, if you glue objects of a certain type you can it can produce a completely new object 
okay. So, if you glue functions locally you might get something uh, which is very different from what an ordinary function is. For example, uh, if you glue topological spaces in a funny way you might get a topological space that you that looks very different from the ones that you started with okay. Uh, we are going to see later that uh, if you glue affine spaces finitely many affine spaces you can get a projective space okay. So, for example, if I take two copies of the uh, you know if I take for example, the usual topology and take two copies of the unit disc on the real plane and you know if I uh, uh, make them look like two open two hemispheres of a sphere and then glue them like this I will get a sphere okay. And the point is that the new topological space I have got which is a sphere is very very special because it is compact which is not a property that is shared by either of the two open discs I started out to glue it. So, the problem is that gluing of objects in mathematics can produce new objects with which uh, which have properties are completely different okay. The same thing happens also when you try to glue functions and what I am saying is that when you whenever you make a definition point wise you are actually doing some gluing and then for all you know you might ask the uh, the following thing can, can happen if I look at all the functions on affine space itself which are uh, regular at every point they could be very well different from polynomials what is the guarantee that they could not they are they are no different from polynomials. But the answer is that uh, you are not going to get anything new okay and that is what that is a surprise and it is a pleasant surprise and that is what we are going to prove okay. So, uh, so let me uh, uh, let me try to explain that. So, so just to stress this gluing business uh, let me write out uh, uh, so le let me make a few uh, you know uh, 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 let me let let me make a few uh, notational uh, conventions. So, what I am going to do is uh, x uh, uh, in a n uh, uh, k uh, and a fine variety or a quasi affine variety uh, so let me do the following thing uh, let me let me do it one by one let x in a and b an affine variety uh, uh, I define o of x to be the regular functions the set of regular functions on x. And so, you see, this is the new notation I'm using. This is this is this is a calligraphic O, okay, uh, for regular functions. Because as yet, I do not know uh, anything about a uh, global regular function, except that it's locally a quotient of polynomials, okay. And certainly, I don't expect it to be anything. I can't expect it to be anything. Uh, unless I prove something about it okay. So, and similarly you know if u inside x inside a n so this is this is this is irreducible closed and then u is an open inside this irreducible closed and u is a quasi affine variety. So, a quasi affine variety is supposed to be just an open subset of an affine variety then again uh, o of u is defined to be regular functions on u okay and uh, this is these are global definitions okay and how do these global definitions come they come from local definitions point wise definitions okay and uh, so let me so let me write down what is what is the definition of so for example if you write uh, uh, suppose I write phi belongs to O u means what means okay phi is a map from u to k is a map that is regular uh, at each small x in u. 
I am of course I am writing this for you but you know I can as well write it for uh, uh, the same uh, thing will also work for x where x is a uh, actually an affine variety okay but I am taking a quasi affine variety right. So what is a regular function on a quasi affine variety it is a it is a it is a function which is with values in the field which is uh, which is just a map but with the property that it is regular at every point that means what so for every uh, uh, so for every x in u there exists polynomials uh, g x h x in k of x1 etc xn where of course uh, uh, your uh, u is being considered in x uh, u is being considered inside x which is being considered in some a in an okay your your uh, your u is an open subset of x capital x it is a quasi affine variety and it is being considered in some affine space it is an irreducible closed subset of some affine space and uh, there are polynomials such that that uh, 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 d of h x uh, contains x and uh, phi is the same as g x by h x on d h x this is the uh, you see this is the definition on d h x uh, or rather I should say uh, d h x may not be all of uh, uh, on uh, uh, an open neighborhood of small x containing contained in in d of h x this is what it means for give me a point x I can uh, the function phi uh, in an open neighborhood of that small point small x is the same function that I would get if I evaluate a quotient of polynomials which that with the denominator polynomial not vanishing and the polynomials being taken in the appropriate number of variables in which uh, dimensional affine space you are considering u and x okay so you see see this definition is uh, you see this is a problem with this definition the problem with this definition is it's so arbitrary in in a certain sense see i could have you know the same space the same affine uh, variety x could sit in so many affine spaces see if i if x for example is a two plane then x could be a2 or x could be two plane in a3 maybe the xy plane or it could be the two plane in some an it could be anywhere and depending on where it is I have to take polynomials in as many variables and then I have to take a quotient. So you see it is a there is so much arbitrariness in this definition there is so much arbitrariness in this definition and that uh, sometimes is a little scary okay but the point is that you have this for every point uh, x. So uh, uh, now you see note that that uh, uh, the d h x uh, where x is in x where x is in u is an open covering of capital X right because I said for every point small x I am getting this h x such that the affine open set d h x contains x okay and this affine open set basic affine open set d h x is considered in this affine space that affine space of that dimension in which is that number of variables in which uh, number of variables you have taken the polynomial h h x okay and of course since I say this such a h x exists for every x in u it means that all these d h x's they cover you okay but then what do we know about the Zariski topology we know that uh, it is quasi compact therefore what it will tell you is that out of this uh, out of this collection of d x h x s I can just be uh, cont uh, content with having only finitely many okay. So by the quasi compactness by the quasi compactness of 
u okay u is after all a subset of uh, uh, x which is in turn a subset of a n and then you know uh, uh, when you take subsets and take the induced topology uh, the noetherianness uh, goes down uh, it is hereditary. So u becomes a noetherian topological space and you know a noetherian topological space is quasi compact as we saw in the last lecture. So uh, u is quasi compact and that means that every open cover has a finite sub cover. So what it means is that there exists x1 etcetera xm in u such that uh, u uh, is uh, d h x1 intersection sorry union uh, u is contained in the union of all these d h x i h x n and uh, uh, well of course phi uh, uh, restricted to phi uh, uh, phi is uh, uh, g x i by h x i uh, in a neighborhood of x i contained in d h d of h x i for every i this is what it means. So you see so you see what it means so what it means is uh, when you say that uh, uh, you are having a regular function what it means is that you are actually taking quotients of polynomials and finitely many such quotients such that these quotients they agree on the intersections you see if you take the intersection of d h x i with d h x j then in that intersection phi will locally be both g x i by h x i and it will also be equal to g x j by h x j. So what you are saying is you are saying that a general regular function is simply gotten by taking finitely many quotients of polynomials with the property that these quotients of polynomials agree the functions that they define upon evaluation agree on these intersections okay and this is exactly what gluing is gluing is you take functions locally and then uh, so many functions with a certain property glue to give a bigger function if they all uh, give uh, on the intersections the functions should agree. So what you are saying is just take finitely many quotients of polynomials such that the uh, locus of the non vanishing of the denominator polynomials covers your uh, space that is u in this case and such that these quotients wherever uh, uh, the uh, the loci where the denominator polynomials do not vanish intersect the quotients evaluate to the same function okay such a this is what a regular function on u is okay it is got by locally so what you so a global regular function a regular function on open set is actually gotten by gluing finitely many quotients of polynomials so it is a gluing process and now uh, so this is how uh, it is for u it is the same it is the same definition instead of u I can put capital X also the, is the same definition works for any subset in fact if you want of uh, of affine space but particular in fact instead of u I could have put any subset of affine space okay and I could have said regular functions on that set but we are interested only in regular functions on either open sets or on closed sets or either they should be regular functions on uh, irreducible open sets they are open subsets uh, uh, that is either they should be uh, we are interested in functions on either irreducible closed subsets that is functions on uh, affine sub varieties or we are introduced uh, we are we are interested in functions on open subsets of such affine uh, sub varieties okay. So u is an open subset of x and of course uh, I am uh, whenever I am considering a subset I am certainly uh, not looking at the empty set. So u is a non empty open subset and mind you a non empty open subset is both irreducible and dense okay because capital X is both irreducible and dense I mean because capital X is, an is irreducible okay. So you see what we have defined as regular functions is something that is uh, very strange it is the these are gotten by gluing finitely many quotients of polynomials. So now I can ask 
what will I get if I put O of if I apply this O to A n itself what do what will I get if I apply O to D H what will I get if I apply O to X what will I get if I op apply O to D H intersect X what will I get the answer is very beautiful the answer is you will get exactly what you go what you will get if you apply A okay that is the beautiful thing okay and the fact is that is uh, uh, the sophisticated uh, uh, way of seeing that is that that describes uh, uh, that is that is why all the four are actually affine varieties okay. So, uh, in more general algebraic geometry you can define A the A for uh, objects which are affine objects okay and then you can define the O for any general object and then the theorem is that a general object is an affine object if and only if the O is the same as the A okay and that is exactly what is happening here alright. So, uh, so I mean that is saying it in very loose terms okay uh, to understand the exact uh, import of that statement you should study uh, scheme theory which is which should be a second course in uh, in algebraic geometry okay but nevertheless does not do any harm in my stating it here. So, uh, if at all you go ahead to study scheme theory you can come back and try to remember the statement okay. So, uh, so let me so let me make that state let me make let me make this remarkable uh, uh, statement. Uh, so, here is theorem O of A n is equal to A of is isomorphic I should say ok let me put isomorphic So, here is the theorem the theorem is that what you define as regular functions are going to give back exactly these functions which are given for which are given uh, when you apply A to uh, these objects either affine space or affine varieties or basic open subsets of affine space or basic open subsets of affine varieties okay this is the this is the statement right. So, uh, the the technique of proof is uh, literally the same it is a it basically it is a it is a technique in commutative algebra. So, what I will do is I will let me first prove the first one and in fact you can see that you can deduce the remaining uh, if you are a little careful and just apply the same philosophy as the proof of the first okay. So, what I will do is let me proof uh, let us prove uh, O of A n is isomorphic to A of A let us prove this all right let us prove this. So, how does one do this? So, what I will do is I will do the following thing. So, I will define a map define a map A, A of A n to O of A n by very very simple map take the A of A n is just the polynomial ring in n variables over k and simply send it uh, send the a polynomial uh, g to the function g from A n to k. So, it is a very very simple map. So, what you do is take up take an element here what is it it is a polynomial in uh, n variables over k and a polynomial in n variables over k is a function 
it is a function from a n to k by evaluation you can evaluate the polynomial at every point and that is in uh, that is in uh, certainly a regular function because a regular function is something that is uh, locally given by quotients of polynomials and this is globally given uh, by a single polynomial and this single polynomial g can be written as g by 1 if you want you can think of this g as g by 1 and the locus where 1 does not vanish is everything okay and uh, therefore it is also a regular function. So all I am just trying to say is that every polynomial is certainly a regular function there is no doubt about it a regular function is something that locally looks like a quotient of polynomials but something that is globally a polynomial is also a regular function because it is a polynomial divided by 1 if you want and 1 is a constant polynomial which always makes sense okay. Now the, the fact is that you see uh, just like all the polynomial form a ring you can add two polynomials you, uh, you can multiply them and then they form a vector space over k and then uh, so the, the ring of polynomials is a k algebra okay it is a finitely generated k algebra in fact it is a free, free polynomial algebra in so many variables. In the same way the ring of regular functions is also uh, the, the set of regular functions is also a ring that is the first thing you have to realize because you see uh, you take you take sum of two regular functions okay the sum will also be regular because uh, if you take uh, local a regular function is locally given by a quotient of two polynomials and if you take two such regular functions and add uh, in a suitable neighborhood the corresponding quotients of polynomials the sum of quotients of two polynomials is again a quotient of two polynomials okay in the correct neighborhood where the denominator does not vanish and the product of uh, uh, two quotients of polynomials is again a quotient of polynomials right so the moral of the story is that when i define this o of something whatever it is the the regular functions on that thing that's a ring in fact that's a k algebra it it is it is it has addition it has multiplication it is a vector space over k you can easily see that uh, if you take a regular function multiplied by a scalar the result is again a regular function because locally you are just multiplying the numerator polynomial by that scalar okay in the in the expression locally as a quotient of polynomials for that function okay and uh, it is also clear that uh, uh, that is a k algebra uh, and so on. So uh, these isomorphisms that I have written here they are not just isomorphisms of rings they are isomorphisms of k algebras okay they are isomorphisms they are ring isomorphisms uh, they are isomorphisms of vector spaces also okay that means scalars go to scalars lambda uh, a, a scalar lambda in k thought of as a constant polynomial lambda goes to the same uh, constant function lambda thought of as a regular function okay. So these are all k algebra homomorphisms okay. So this map this map that I have written here is actually it is very easy to see that it is obvious to see that it is a ring homomorphism because g uh, you know f g1 plus g2 uh, uh, what g goes to and what uh, I mean this this association will preserve addition multiplication it will uh, it is k linear and all that so this is a ring homomorphism it is a k algebra homomorphism okay and then the fact I want to make is that I will have to prove two things I will have to prove that this is injective I have to prove it is surjective if I prove that then I get that this is an isomorphism of k algebras which is what I want okay so uh, so it is a, so let me write that it is a k algebra homomorphism that is obvious no doubt about that then how do you show it is injective it is injective why is it injective uh, well uh, if you take two polynomials g1 and g2 which as functions are different it means that there is a point in a n where the values of g1 and g2 are different that means the difference polynomial g1 minus g2 does not vanish at that point okay and uh, that should tell you that g1 and g2 cannot be the same okay. So it is very clear that uh, it is injective the injectivity is just uh, very severe okay in other words you know uh, I am I am another way to say it is that I am saying that if you take a polynomial and if I evaluate it as a function and suppose as a function 
it is a zero map as a function then the polynomial has to be the zero polynomial okay so this is something that uh, uh, is uh, is obvious probably it just requires the fact that uh, the field k is infinite okay which is true because the field is an algebraically closed field and an algebraically closed field is infinite okay uh, of course the problem is over finite fields you can always find polynomials which are non zero polynomials but which evaluated as functions end up being the zero function okay that can happen for finite fields but uh, small k is not a finite field it is a an algebraically closed field and an algebraically closed field is always infinite and for an infinite field if you have a polynomial which uh, 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 if it is if upon evaluation it is the zero map then the polynomial has to be the zero polynomial okay that is the statement that is injective okay. Uh, but what is really crucial is the fact that it is surjective so that requires a little bit of proof so let me do that. So that is where a little bit of commutative algebra will come in and you will recognize what is going on if you have done a course in uh, uh, an earlier course in commutative algebra and where uh, you have proved that uh, you know uh, the uh, you have proved the quasi compactness of the Zariski topology uh, when you take the prime spectrum of a ring okay. So, uh, so let me do this. Uh, it is surjective so what I'll do is I'll start with so let phi be uh, a regular function okay take a regular function right so phi is a map from a n to uh, k and by your definition of what a regular function is there exists finitely many points okay and uh, uh, such that the union is the whole affine space and such that phi is uh, quotient of polynomials in this sense okay. So let me write that write that down there exists points uh same such that uh a n is d uh, h 1 h sub x 1 d sub h x m ok. Uh, where h x 1 through h x m are polynomials in invariables um, and phi uh, is equal to uh, g x i by h x i on d h x i uh, for every i okay. uh, and of course uh, g x 1 through g x m they are also polynomials in invariants ok. This is from the definition of what a regular function is ok. Now um, you see see the first thing is that this has uh, uh, a meaning in terms of commutative algebra the meaning that it has in terms of commutative algebra is that the uh, the ideal generated by the hxi is the unit ideal okay so uh, this means commutative algebraically so you know it's a translation 
it is a translation of all these geometric facts into commutative algebra okay and you extract some information from commutative algebra. So, the fact that A is union of all this means that uh, uh, the ideal generated by H x 1 etcetera H x m is 1 is ideal generated by 1 namely it is a whole polynomial. this is this is a this is the first thing that needs to be noted and uh, and why is this true why this is true is because well if this the if this ideal is not the unit ideal then it is a proper ideal and then we know that every proper ideal is contained in a maximal ideal okay and that and that and you know the maximal ideal is a that is cor corresponds to a point okay. So, what will happen is that uh, uh, if you that point will have some coordinates okay, but that point will be here it is a point of a n. So, it has to be in one of these. So, that means that at least one of the h x i's does not vanish at that point, but that will contradict the fact that this is contained in the ideal of that point okay. So, this is exactly what I am going to prove if not if not uh, h x 1 the ideal generated by h x 1 etcetera h x m is contained in a maximal ideal which is of the form uhhh say x 1 x 1 minus lambda 1 etcetera x n minus lambda n okay. This will tell you that uh, you see it will tell you that uhhh uh, so you know if I apply uh, if I apply the z right you know if uh, i 1 is contained in i 2 then z of i 1 contains z of i 2 where z is the uh, operation that associates to an ideal it is 0 set. So, this will tell you that z of h x 1 etcetera h x m contains z of this maximal ideal which is actually the point uh, uh, which is actually simply the point the singleton point lambda 1 through lambda n okay all right. That means wh what this what this tells you is that uh, this point is uh, uh, you know it tells you that this point is a common uh, uh, this point is a common 0 of all these h's okay and if this point is a common 0 of all these h's uh, that contradicts this statement because this point is here okay and by definition every point here has to be contained in some locus where a certain h does not vanish. But then you are saying that I have but I have been able to find a point which is not in any of these okay it is a contradiction a contradiction. to a n is equal to d h 1 d h x 1 union d h x n x m ok right. So, the moral of the story is that indeed the idea this condition the fact that the affine space is a finite union of certain basic open affine open sets means that the the equations uh, corresponding to those uh, basic affine open sets those polynomials actually generate the unit ideal okay. So, so uh, what all this will tell you is that uh, this generate the unit ideal. So, what it will tell you is that there exists there exists you know uh, uh, let me give some other names um, okay. So, let me use f f's so there are f 1 etcetera f m polynomials in n variables such that uh, uh, sigma f i h x i is equal to 1 I get this okay. In other words the 1 is in ideal generated by the h i's. So, 1 should be generated by a ring linear combination of the h i's and that is what I have written here these f i's are ring ring elements the coefficients from the ring 
okay. So, I of course, I is equal to 1 to m okay. Now, you see now the point is that I will have to show that uh, let us go back to what, what I started with and what I want to show. I started with a regular function on an okay and I, I am just trying to prove subjectivity of this map. So I'm started with something here, a regular function on an, and I'm trying to find that it comes, show that it comes from here. So I'll have to cook up a polynomial which is equal to that function. Okay. So I'll have to use this information to sh cook up a polynomial g such that if I consider g as a map, I get this phi. That's what I'll have to do. Okay. And uh, that's uh, that's pretty easy to see. So the trick is you multiply both sides by phi okay multiply both sides by phi okay and what I'll so I'll so let me do that so sigma i equal to 1 to m f i h x i into phi is equal to phi okay I get this just by multiplying uh, uh, both sides by phi and then I use the fact that you know uh, you see uh, phi is g x i by h x i on d h x i but if I cross multiply I will get phi times h x i equal to g x i not only on d x i I will get it everywhere okay. So I am using the following uh, fact if two polynomials are equal on an open set if two polynomials treated as functions they coincide on a non empty open set if if the two functions defined by two polynomials if they coincide as a function on a non empty open set then the polynomials are equal okay. So what this equation tells me is that on this non empty open set d h x i the pol uh, uh, the, the function phi times h x i and g x i they are the same okay and I want to say from that that they are the same. Uh, phi times h x i and g x i are the same uh, if you want uh, as regular functions on the whole space. So I am using so in fact let me restate it more correctly I am saying that if you have two regular functions which are which coincide on an open set then they have to coincide on the whole space if two regular functions coincide on a non empty open set then they coincide on the whole space the reason is the reason is topological the reason is because regular functions are continuous and open subsets are dense it is very simple the reason is topological okay. So uh, if two uh, so all I am saying is that if I have two regular functions okay and if they if they uh, um, this the fact that they coincide on open set on an open set means that the, the difference regular function is 0 on an open set okay all right but the set of points where a function is 0 is a closed subset because a function is continuous therefore this open subset is contained in a closed set but the open subset is dense which will tell you that the open subset uh, that it will tell you that these two regular functions are, are, are the same everywhere okay. So, le so let me uh, let me write that down so that you know uh, okay so let me rub this side I still want this side of the uh, board so let me write that down so that it becomes clearer to you. So what I do is here is a lemma so here is a lemma lemma 1 any uh, regular function function is continuous. So here is here is the lemma uh, any regular function is continuous. Uh, so you see uh, so what is the proof so the proof is take uh, psi in O of u if you want okay or let me take O of uh, something um, okay so let me take O of u right then uh, so psi is actually a map from u to uh, k psi uh, uh, looks 
like g mod h locally okay where you know g and h are polynomials they are polynomials uh, in uh, the right number of variables and you are considering u inside that affine space okay and then uh, you see to show to show chi psi to show psi is continuous continuous it is enough to show psi inverse of a closed subset is equal to a closed subset okay all right so psi inverse of a closed subset of uh, here is a closed subset of k and is a closed subset of u this is what i'll have to show all right but then what is a close uh, you know the zariski topology on k which is a1 the zariski topology is just the complement finite topology namely uh, the clo only closed sets of finitely many points so to so psi, psi inverse of a closed set is just psi inverse of finitely many points and to show that that is and psi inverse behaves well with respect to unions psi inverse of a union of sets is the union of psi inverse of those sets psi inverse behaves well with respect to the operation of taking unions so to show that psi inverse of a finite set of points is closed it is enough to show that psi inverse of a single point is closed okay so uh, enough to show psi inverse of a point lambda in k is a closed set a closed subset of u this is what i have to show okay so but but you see but then given x in u there exists uh, g x h x with uh, x belonging to d of h x and psi is equal to g x by h x okay. So, so what this will tell you is that you know it will tell you that uh, 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 yeah, so in a neighborhood of x containing contained in d h x this is what this is the definition local definition all right. But then but uh, psi inverse of a of of lambda intersection this neighborhood is just g x mod h x inverse lambda in uh, intersection this neighborhood and this is just equal to z of so g x mod h x has to be lambda so g x has to be lambda h x so g x minus lambda h x has to be 0 so it translates to z of g x minus lambda h x intersection this neighborhood which is of course closed closed in this neighborhood okay and you are done because you know to check that a subset of a topological space is closed it is enough to check it on an open cover okay. So what I have done is I have for every neighborhood every every point I have shown that sin was lambda intersection that neighborhood is a closed subset in that neighborhood okay and if I vary x I, I get an open cover and uh, for each of the sets in the open cover I verified that the inverse image intersect intersected with that uh, a set of the open cover is a closed subset okay. So this proves the lemma now let me prove another lemma which is the lemma that I want to apply there. So uh, 
of course you know I am here I am lo looking at regular function on a either on an affine variety or a quasi affine variety mind you okay. So, so here is lemma 2 uh, in fact uh, yeah if 2 regular functions agree on a non empty open subset open subset then they are equal if you have two regular functions they are equal on non empty open subset then they are equal everywhere proof is two lines proof is trivial two functions agree on a non empty open subset means the difference function is 0 on a non empty open subset but the any non empty open subset is dense okay for the Zariski topology. So uh, you have a function that is you have a continuous function that is 0 on a dense open set so it has to be 0 everywhere so it is obvious. So proof is any non empty open subset is dense and it is just and a function which is 0 on a dense a continuous function which is 0 on a dense open subset has to be 0 everywhere simple topology. So if you apply these two lemma I mean I need this lemma now you look at now you look at this equation that I have written here in this equation you know if I calculate if I look at the product h x i times phi the product h x i times phi is g x i on d h x i okay but h x i times phi is also a regular function it is a product of two regular functions and g x i is also a regular function because you have already seen every problem is regular function. So you are saying the regular function phi times h x i is equal to the regular function g x i on the non empty open subset d h x i therefore by this lemma it is the same everywhere therefore for h x i times phi I can put g x i okay. So what I will get is I will get sigma i equal to 1 to m f i g x i equal to phi and that tells you that phi is actually that polynomial given on the given by the left side that is the polynomial that I wanted okay. So, so now I let me continue so let me rewrite that sigma i equal to 1 to m uh, f i h x i phi is equal to phi this is equality as regular functions okay but h x i times phi is the same as g x i because h x i times phi is equal to g x i on d h x i and therefore on whole affine space because of this lemma therefore I can replace h x i times phi as g x i everywhere. So what this will tell you is that it will tell you that phi is actually sigma i equal to 1 to m h f i g x i and that is the end of the proof I have proved that the regular function is actually the function that you get by evaluating a polynomial what is that polynomial here is the polynomial okay that is the proof. So you see there is a tricky bit of commutative algebra coming inside inside the proof okay so the moral of the story is the there is no difference between the ring of regular functions on affine space and polynomials on affine space okay so every regular function uh, on affine space which is defined locally by gluing polynomials uh, by, by by gluing quotients of polynomials if you if you take a regular function on the whole affine space which you have gotten locally by gluing quotients of polynomials the resulting regular function is actually a polynomial in other in, in what that means to what that means to say is that it is the function that is gotten by evaluation of single polynomial and that this is the this is that fact written in the form of an equation okay so you do not get anything new okay. Now you can use the same technique of proof to prove the other statements okay uh, all the time you will use this fact that whenever as uh, the corresponding space is a union is contained in a union of uh, finitely many basic open affines then the corresponding uh, equations polynomials that occur in those that define those basic opens the ideal generated by that is unitary that is the key 
and then from that uh, by applying this lemma you can get this you can get the proof for all the other cases okay. So in the case of uh, so in all these cases your regular functions agree with uh, the, the ring of functions that we defined the coordinate ring of functions that we defined okay. So I will stop here.